Good morning. Welcome in the name of the Lord. It's a pleasure to have you here in worship with us today. Uh, Just a number of things that I probably want to go over with you. Um, Out in the gathering area, uh, there's an opportunity. We just didn't want people to bunch up and put their flowers and their cross in this area. So um, if you'd like to place a memorial flower in memory of somebody that you have known, that you have loved and you have lost, um, there is a cross that's available. Um, There are um, free flowers that are sitting next to it, and if you would like to um, purchase a flower to put into that, I think you probably noticed that there is some that are available for purchase. Um, uh, Actually, the youth that are going on mission trips, um, junior high or senior high mission trips to either Arizona or to Jamaica are using that partially as a fundraiser too, since our fundraising capabilities are um, down this year. So um, if you'd like to um, place a flower in there, um, you're welcome to do so, and please know that that's kind of what's going on um, with the youth and the selling of the flowers that are taking place as well. I um, also want to let you know that at the end of this service, we're going to have the Sacrament of Holy Communion, um, which means that after the service is over, please be seated, wait for the ushers to take you out so that we can remain socially distanced. I mean, I don't, no, I'm sure that everybody is aware that the number of cases in our specific area have been going up. And well, quite frankly, as we're going to be doing the reading of the necrology today, I love you all and I don't want to lose any of you. Okay, so let's make sure that we keep ourselves safe. Um, And for that reason, um, while we're not requiring that, we are encouraging all people um, to consider whether or not you're going to use masks as much as possible when you're in the vicinity of other folks. I'm not going to do that because I think that it will impede the ability for people to be able to understand me while I preach, but I will have one on when I am not 20 feet away from all of you um, when we're in worship. There is a budget hearing that's going to be taking place in this room after worship is over. So if you are um, interested in that, um, please know that that is going to take place. Um, Also, a craft show normally that benefits Royal Family Kids Camp and the track program, which is the Teen Adventure, Teen Reach Adventure Camp. Um, Those things are canceled for this year. And so if uh, um, the church is giving a donation to those places, since that was one of their main fundraisers, if anybody would like to do that personally, um, we can provide you with the information on where that money could go. Uh, Just a couple of other announcements. Um, Chad Power. Chad, I think, is up there. Everybody can kind of wave the chat up in the top there. Um, Chad Power and Dale Schultz are going to put together a group of people who might want to help with putting media together. And so if anybody has... If anybody is interested in that, we would love to have you to be a part of that team because if I was a part of that team, you would be asking us not to have media anymore. So anyway, if that is one of the places where you are gifted, we would really like um, you to be a part of that um, if you were able to do so. And lastly, um, I was just talking with Barb Holen and she asked whether or not on Tuesday night we could have the church open for anybody who would like to come in and pray because We're going to be having an election, and I think everybody knows how divided our country is right now. And so if you would like to come in, um, I will promise that I will be here from 7 till 9. And um, people just, there's not going to be any formal program of anything that's going to go on. But if you would like to come in and pray, this will certainly be a place where you will be open that you can come in and pray. Uh, Other announcements, I'm sure, are listed in your bulletins and your newsletters on the website, on Facebook. Um, So would the congregation please stand. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share that peace with one another. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness in sin, let us ask from God mercy and forgiveness. Eternal and merciful God. In every age, you have raised up women and men to live and die in faith. Forgive our indifference to your will. You have commanded us to speak, 
but we have been silent. You have called us to do what is just, but we have been fearful. Have mercy on us, your faithless servants. Keep before us faithful people for us to follow, so that, living with courage and love, we may inherit the kingdom promised in Jesus Christ and live with him forever. Amen. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. As a minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore to declare to you that you are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn for all the saints. Let us pray. O oh God, generous and supreme, your loving Son lived among us, instructing us in the ways of humility and justice, continue to ease our burdens, and lead us to serve alongside him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We remember those who have gone before us and now rest in God's nearer presence. The names I am about to read are the ones who have been buried from this congregation in the last calendar year since last All Saints Day. We realize that grief is not limited to a calendar year. We also realize that relationships 
run further out than people just in this congregation. Um, while these are the ones that we're going to read, please remember that if you would like to place a flower either before the service or after the service is over in the cross that is in the gathering area, you are welcome to do so. But these are some of the people who have entered into the church triumphant during the past year. Levon Barth, Joshua Borg, Florence Carmen, Ronald Chamberlain, Wayne Clausen, Norman Giesler, Shirley Gronwald, Walter Hyen, Kayla Ivey, Judith Holting, Ronald Kraft Jr., Alice Kruger, Elaine Lamsky, Marilyn Lindbergh Hibbler, Pierre Listow, Roland Mansky, Peggy Marsh, Norma McWhorter, Anna Meyer, Nelda Menzel, Corey Powell, Sharon Reams, Lynn Schriever, Jerry Stromer, Janice Tim, Lavina Wisner, and Vernon Young. Saints of all ages have faithfully shared the faith with us. Indeed, our remembrance is not limited to the past year, nor to those who are members of this congregation. Therefore, as a sign of the great cloud of witnesses, we remember those who have shared with us the body of Christ. And again, you know how the remembrance goes. I would invite the congregation to stand. The hymn is number 770, which is Give Me Jesus.
may be seated. Our first reading comes from Revelation chapter 7, beginning with the ninth verse. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And for this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the reading. Our psalm reading this morning is from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good Happy are those who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you, his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning with the seventh verse. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, 
our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longed to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Here ends the reading. Let us rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. So about midway through the week this week, I was in the office. Chad was taking a look at some of the videos that were out for the possibility of being able um, to use in worship, and he had one on his screen, and I thought it sounded interesting, so he played the whole thing for me, and I said, I can use that this Sunday. So, Chad, if you want to go ahead and start that video. This is the story of how God Almighty went on an eternal search that was born of love and cost his blood, the story of his holy church. We were at first disembodied. Our limbs and bodies were active practitioners of misanthropy. 
We were fingers without hands, wrists with no arms, shoulders without chest, parts without form, heels with no foot, knees with no leg, toes with no step, appendages with no head. We were lost and stranded wanderers, doomed to die alone. But that was before God graciously left his throne. For eons ago, in the space and time where only eternity grows, the only truly unified body existed in divinity, and it is forever known as the Trinity. Now this celestial anatomy, this father, son, and spirit assembly, this family of one, yet panoply of many, is and was and will forever be the only hope for humanity. For it is and was and will forever be the only true embodiment of unity. So the perfect body, the perfection expression of the one of three, took up flesh and took on a mortal life, and he is and was and will forever be known as Christ. But for many, something didn't seem right. For if this Son, this God, this Savior, this King was the hope for the world, why is He dying on this tree? If he was to renew our bodies, why is his being torn apart? If he was to give us eternal life, why is his ending among thieves and guards? But these questions were asked by those who only see wounds as scars. For as he was torn, we were mended. As he was ashamed, we were perfected. As he was ripped, we were sewn. As he was opened, we were closed. And though the one true body is back on his throne, you may know that the one true body lives on here below. For his body did rise, yet in leaving it did not die, but lives on in the church, the unified body of Christ. But it wasn't just for a body that God sent his son to die. It was for an eternal companion. It was for a bride. As it is written, it is for this reason that man shall leave his father and hold fast to his wife. So the son left the father, so that the two may become one flesh, may become one life. And though there is but one husband, we are of much flesh. Red and yellow, black and white, Baptist, Lutheran, Church of Christ. Yet no matter the color or affiliation of one of 10,000 racial, economical, or denominational stripes, when we became Christians, Christians, we left our fathers for the husband, and we all form the bride of Christ. For we were 10,000 weak, 10,000 undone, but now the church is becoming the bride, and 10,000 with Christ shall be made one. But God's goodness was not then done, his plan not yet complete, for he wanted to live with his new bride, so he made his wife a building. Now we are living stones, Breathing bricks, laughing lumber, surviving sticks, built bit by bit, inch by inch, together with every Christian the groom admits. Together we knit one on top of the other as we submit around the pillars of the apostles and prophets, all coming to sit on the one foundation of Christ, the structures magnet. We are the church, the only building no force in heaven nor on earth could purge, the ark that holds the eternal God, the temple that trembles with his spirit's surge. And so I urge you, you body, you bride, you building, you church, to not abandon, profane, or neglect God's church, his perfect work. Fight boldly for the body, love deeply the bride, live holy in the building, for I tell you, we are for what Christ has died. We are the assembly of the saints, the congregation of the upright. We are where heaven inhabits. We are the fold of Christ. We are the branch of God's planting, the meeting of the firstborn. We are heaven and earth's family. We are the heritage of the Lord. We are the chosen people. We are the holy nation. We are the royal priesthood, God's special reclamation. We are the temple. We are the city. We are the vineyard, the sanctuary. We are the body. We are the bride. We are the building. We are the church. We are the construction of eternity's eternal 
holy work. So we will never dismember the flesh. We will never divorce the wife. We will never dismantle the house. We will never dismiss the price, but we'll lay everything down for our everlasting tribe. For we are the church. We are the people of Christ. Pretty good writer, isn't he? He's obviously read his Bible too. Reason that I thought that this would go well is because um, from the video, actually from scripture, it's filled with all kinds of word images. It's filled with all kinds of word pictures, things like bride of Christ or a living building or a royal priesthood or a holy nation or a vineyard. I don't know. Notice how many were in there. I don't know if you also noticed that from one of our scripture verses for today, it was also filled with more word images and more word pictures. St. Paul's letter in 2 Corinthians talked about things like tents and buildings and being clothed in clay jars. The images of tents and buildings, however, you know, the, the, the difference between that if you've gone to Israel is stark. Let's, let's just say for um, a place with a lack of trees that when you start to talk about tents or buildings, you're, you're not just talking about houses like we see go up sometimes with pressed lumber that you kind of... Anybody ever look at some of those and go, I wonder how long that's going to stand in the Nebraska wind, you know? You know, that doesn't happen when you're in Israel because in a place where there's a lack of trees, if you're talking about tents and buildings, you're talking about the difference between fabric and stone, which is not just a difference between solid or flimsy or strong or weak. I, I think it's supposed to evoke within us ideas of temporary versus permanent. I guess what I'm saying is don't just think of the Bible as a collection of stories or word images or word pictures. Don't just think of Scripture as a collection of myths or moral truths or historical documents written down for our knowledge or for our education because Scripture is so very, 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 very much more than that. It's a collection of covenants. It's a collection of promises written and given to inspire our faith, to take away our fear, to give reason to our hope, and to give purpose to our action. A collection of promises, promises in story, promises in poetry, promises in history. Let's think about what we heard and have seen a little bit today, at least for me then, where the rubber hits the road a little bit. I lost my dad uh, over 15 years ago now. Still think about him actually quite a bit. Over the years though, my thinking and my remembering have gone a little bit differently. usually don't think that much anymore about things like cardiomyopathy or heart attacks or funeral services. But I, I do remember more now what he was like when he was living. I remember him laughing, I remember him loving, I remember him playing cards, I remember him teaching the grandkids, but all of these images now also get wrapped up for me. And scripture promises also So when I think about dad now, I think about streets of gold and gates of pearl. Maybe not literally, but I think that's supposed to mean more more beautiful than I can imagine. And I think about promises of green pastures and still waters. Not that I think heaven is simply a replica of earth, but 
Well, because quite frankly, I can't think of anything that sounds more peaceful than that does. Combine that with a banquet hall of rich foods and wine on the lees strained clear. And that evokes for me not only promises but also memories of dad inviting people who had little or people who had loss to our family holiday gatherings. He would introduce them to us and they would simply become a part of our family for that day. And it made me think about a heavenly banquet where everyone has a seat and where there's enough and more for everybody. Put that together with a father's house and many rooms or reunited with those who have gone before you and that sounds like love and home and relationship to me. Add to that an image or a word picture or a promise from scripture that we heard about for today, Bride of Christ. I have to admit, before I saw this video, I don't think I really put this quite together as much. But that word picture, that promise from Scripture, that bride of Christ, my, my dad was not just a member of the church. My dad was a servant of the church and a servant of the Lord to those people in that church. When they took his casket out of the church that he served, it went down the aisle and out to the cemetery that was connected to that congregation. In all honesty, I can still see that image in my head as well. But what if you thought about that walk down the aisle another way? As a covenant, as a promise, not unlike a wedding where the bride walks down the aisle to meet her groom with a promise of love together from this time forward. Dad, the bride, which is quite frankly something that makes me chuckle a little bit. He would have made a very unattractive woman. But an aisle walk to covenant love, to promised love forever, to not only promised love, but love fulfilled forever. That's a word picture. I mean, that's a word image. Let's take the other image, the one we had for today from 2 Corinthians 4 and 5. The promise of things temporary and things eternal. The difference between a tent and a building. The contrast between a protection of fabric and a protection of stone. What, bodies, what, what, what Paul's saying is our bodies are like tents. And the years of our lives beat on them like the wind and the rain. <coughs> that image kind of makes sense to me because we used to go camping a lot in tents. And over time, that constant beating of the wind and the rain took a toll. There would be a leak that would appear here. There would be a tear that would be in the seam that would be there. There would be a hole that would emerge from the floor and these tents, these clay jars, we call them bodies, seemingly strong. Yet, surprisingly fragile and breakable. And don't get me wrong, with the help of diet and exercise, we can keep the wind and the rain at bay for a little while. With the aid of doctors, we can mend and glue these tents, these clay jars, back to usefulness for a bit longer. But in the end, in the end, Paul's right. They're temporary. That, my good friends, is not the promise. That is simply the truth. The promise is not that we are tense. The problem is that there's going to be a building. The promise is that there's going to be an eternity. The promise is not that we have a tent 
that we have been living in, but there is going to be a building not made with hands. The promise is that the walk down the aisle is going to be one in which we encounter beauty and peace and love and joy. The promise is that the very things that on earth seem so temporary and fleeting are firmly established and permanent there, like the difference between fabric and stone. My dad. Your loved ones. The people we placed flowers in that cross in the gathering area in memory of the names that we read on the necrology for today have simply been united with the groom at the end of a walk down the aisle have merely been further clothed with a building, not a tent. Have simply been, how did St. Paul say it again? We wrapped up that scripture reading for today. It said, so that what was mortal may be swallowed up by life. See, they're not just images. They're not just word pictures. They are images and word pictures that carry the promise, which is so very powerful. If you want to, we haven't mixed metaphors enough today yet. If you want to hear some more of those images or proclaim them yourself, The hymn is Thine the Amen, and you'll see a whole bunch more images in that one too. I invite you to stand as we sing. Let us confess together what we believe in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and for the life of the world to come. Amen. O oh God, generous and supreme, your loving Son lived among us, and now longing for his reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious Lord, we pray that you would give to us your Holy Spirit and that through his grace we might believe your holy word and that we might live godly lives here in time and hereafter in eternity. Hear us, O oh God. Sovereign Lord, we pray that you would break and hinder every evil scheme and will. That your, your name might be holy among us and that your kingdom might truly come. Hear us, O oh God. Sustaining Lord, We pray for good government. We pray as the election is upcoming this week that you would unify your church not in our politics but in our confession of Jesus Christ as Lord. Hear us, O oh God. Sustaining Lord, we pray for good weather. And even in the midst of natural disaster, even in the midst of the harsh extremes of the cycles of creation, even as we do not see it and feel it, Lord, that your promise is always good. And we ask that you would preserve and keep your people and that you would let us receive these gifts from you with thanksgiving. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful Lord, do not regard our sins. Do not deal with us according to what we deserve, but give to us all things by your grace. And having so received your grace, may we truly want to forgive those who sin against us. Hear us, O oh God. 
good Lord. Deliver us from evil so that when the final hour comes, you may grant to us a blessed end and take us by grace from these tents, these temporary dwellings, to the eternal house, the house not made with hands that you have gone before us to prepare for us. Hear us, O God. Eternal Lord, you unite all the faithful in a banquet of your abundant grace. On this day, we remember all those who now feast in your eternal presence, especially all those who have died in the past year, those whose names we read earlier, and those who we hold privately in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, in the sure and certain hope that you hear our prayers, receive them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all your children around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Our closing hymn is verses 5 through 7 of For All the Saints. Please remain standing. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. 
who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of eternal life. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join them in their unending hymn. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all is now ready.